Hey, welcome back to 90s Ball Cards. Jake Roy here. So I have a fun product that really brings back a lot of memories, but you know, one of the things that a lot of people think about is Topps Chrome and Topps Finest are really hot sets now, and they were back in the 90s. But when did it all start, and what were some of the things going on in the hobby? So that's what we're gonna look into today. Welcome back. So what we're looking at today is 1993-1994 Topps Finest. So this was a really groundbreaking set when it came back and came out in 93. Uh, you know, so premium products uh, and it was the first set that used the chromium finish on cards. And they also put on there the refractors. So interesting stuff. I had read an article a while back that actually the creator of the chromium finish had offered it to Upper Deck, and Upper Deck had thought that the future was in holograms and holographic foil, so they passed on it, and then they went to the Topps company, and the Topps company ran with it, and, and we've seen what they've done with it since then. So interesting little bit of history uh, of what was going on. So, you know, really cool 90s types of designs, but the interesting thing with the refractors is, you know, a lot of people had never seen them before, so it was easy to pull them out of a pack and not really know what you had. Uh, because there's no indication uh, on the back like you have now and uh, you know really you just had to know what you were looking for now there is a visual difference for sure but um, you know that's really what we're looking at in this set you know so 93 we've got some star rookies that that you know are fond to me so this was Penny's rookie year uh, Chris Webber was the number one pick he was drafted by the Magic and traded for Penny and Jordan this was the year right before his first retirement and you've also got the last year that a lot of Larry Bird cards were in products. And uh, then you've got some Shaq cards and some other stars. But, you know, those are really the, the top five guys that you're looking at in this product. So let's get into what we could pull and some of the odds. All right. So here's some PC items. So the first thing I want to talk about, the main attraction. So this is the only true insert set in this product, and these were inserted one per jumbo pack. So you could only get these that way, you know, not a ton of value, but pretty cool. Uh, you know, they're, you've got the brick on the back and you've got the brick on the front. Uh, and I wish that they had refractors. These would probably look really cool with refractors, but you know, here's a Sean Bradley. Uh, he was the number two pick in 93. You can also get a Chris Webber. There isn't a Penny main attractions. I wish there was, but uh, you know, kind of a, a fun little set. You can see definitely some greening on the face here. The greening's very prevalent in the 93 finest set. So it's very common to see that, but there's the main attractions. And then what we're really all looking for are the refractors. So here's my Penny. This was, uh, you know, for a long time as a Penny collector, this was really the, the crown jewel that I was searching to get into my collection. Uh, and once I got it, you know, it's been a, a prized piece of my collection for a long time. But the interesting thing with this, so I got a PSA 9 here, and I wanted to make sure I had a graded copy just because the refractors can be missed when you're looking at online listings sometimes. Uh, you know, either people could list it and not know that they have a refractor, in which case you could be the beneficiary if you're buying, but also people could list something that's as a refractor that might not be. And sometimes the scans aren't terribly clear and uh, not that they're trying to be misleading, but they just may not know. So, you know, seeing the rainbow finish because there's so many colors in this can be difficult on scans at times. There's no indication on the back. You know, you can see the number down there. There's no R's. There's nothing different on the back of these cards that would tell you. But um, the reason why I specifically wanted to make sure I had it in a PSA 9 is back when I was a kid, my dad got me the base rookie in a PSA 9. And again, this was when grading was very new. So, getting it anything graded was was really really cool so having that i wanted to have a matching twin and a psa 9 so now i've got the refractor and i've got the base they're both uh they're both psa 9s you can see there's a, a considerable amount of green on both of them again green is very very common i don't think i've seen any copies without uh the vast majority of penny being green but uh you know if you if you have seen a copy or you know or you have a copy i'd love to see it you can shoot me a picture of that. But so that's what we're really looking to get there. The refractors are really cool looking. Uh, and like I said, the Jordan is really the big one. So here's the Jordan base. I do not have a Jordan refractor. The Jordan refractors, uh, raw, they go for about $500, I believe was the last I saw. Uh, if you can get one of these to grade out well, whether it's a gem or if it's a, if it's a nine, 
you can you know get a considerable amount more. Centering is definitely key on these. Greening obviously is more about eye appeal, but centering is, is crucial because with the border, you can definitely tell when these are off-centered. So I would love to see us get a Jordan. I'd love to get another Penny. Larry Bird, like I mentioned, is another guy. So this is the only Chromium set with Larry Bird in it from his playing days. And it's the only refractor of Larry Bird from his playing days. So this is really getting towards the twilight years of his career, but being the only one, it definitely holds a little bit of a premium for people who like Larry Bird, uh, the Celtics, or just refractor fans in general. So I'd love to see us get that. The Shaq is another one. Uh, and actually, interestingly enough, with the refractors, there are some that are short printed, or, or they're perceived to be short printed just because of how many are out there. There was never any stated short print, but some of the players that we think are, were short printed were Chris Weber, which was a rookie, uh, the Shaq, Reggie Miller, Scotty Pippen are some of the stars. So the interesting thing is the Penny Refractor, you know, if you're looking at a raw copy sells for about $100, not short printed. And the Chris Weber sells for about the same, which is short printed. So as a Penny collector, I like seeing pennies be worth a little bit more. But those are some of the star players that you can see um, if you see their prices a little bit higher than some other players that you think are comparable, that's why, because they're perceived to be short printed. Uh, that's the general belief out there. We don't know how short print they may be, but uh, let's see if we get one of those as well. All right, so we've got four packs. These are seven cards per pack, which is interesting. It's uh, kind of a high quantity compared to what they have now. All right, finally got into that. So starting out with a Nick Van Exel, this is a rookie for him, very nice. I think we'll get somebody on the back. Michael Adams. Backwards one, let's just go back this way. All right, Dino Raja. They're all messed up, that's okay. We got Sam Cassell, that's a rookie as well for Sam Cassell. Craig Elo. Mark Price, very nice. One more, come on. And Luther Wright. All right, two rookies, not bad for the first pack. All right, I don't know where to start. We'll just go in. Dominique Wilkins, very nice. Love the human highlight reel. Hakeem Olajuwon, also a nice one. Not a lot of green on that, that's really beautiful. Jim Jackson, AC Green, Kevin Johnson, <laughs> John Hot Rod Williams, that's interesting to have the nickname on there. And Malik Seeley, all right, pack number three. All right, and we'll start from this side. Shaq, love that. Not the refractor though. Tony Kukoc, rookie, very nice. And Sam Cassell here, another one of his rookie. We've got Mark Aguirre with the Clippers. Famous Pistons player. Stuck to Brad Doherty, the NCAA, or the NASCAR reporter now. Looks like we got a Sean Kemp. Very nice, not a lot of green on that other than the, the Sonics jersey. And Walt Williams. All right, last pack, I would love to see us get a refractor here. All right, Scott Skiles, another Magic favorite. Lloyd Vaught. Clarence Weatherspoon, that's Sweet Sixers Uni. Marlon Maxi, Ron Harper, Looks like Kevin Duckworth, Alonzo Morning, not bad. All right, so you saw what we pulled. So nothing crazy, no great fire. You know, probably the best was the Tony Kukoc rookie, which you know, great rookie, uh, a great player for the Bulls, but not bringing a whole lot of value. And, you know, those packs 
those sell for between 10 and 20 dollars per pack which you're probably pretty uh you know if you haven't been looking at them it's probably a shocking number you know really people are searching for the jordan refractor like we talked about uh you know even getting a penny refractor would be nice one of the the hot rookies Weber, really those players that we talked about at the beginning, but you know, re you're really looking at five or six cards maybe to try to return some sort of money. You know, a box of these is probably going for about 300 bucks for a box. Uh, you know, just not a great ROI. This is one of those products that over time has really, you know, ascended in value because of just a few cards. So if you're ripping some packs, you're probably not going to make your money back, but it is fun. Uh, you know, these are really cool 90s types of designs and you do have that outside chance of getting some crazy fire. Uh, you know, greening, as we saw, is definitely prevalent in these, but not every card was green. You know, we had uh, the Shaq didn't have a ton of green, but really the, the Kemp uh, was really good as well as the Hakeem was was extraordinary for you know having no green but there's really no rhyme or reason you never know when you're going to open these packs if something's going to be completely green if it's going to be off center you you get no idea what you're getting yourself into um, you know so I always go into it assuming everything's going to be completely green um, but some people don't really mind green some people uh, really hate it uh, and they don't want any green cards or if they have a card that starts green they, they want to get rid of it and replace it with something new so you know, that's interesting. The short print thing is pretty interesting. These as well, you know, not having it be stated that it's a short print uh, is kind of interesting. But question of the day for you is what do you think about short prints that aren't stated short prints, but are perceived or, uh, you know, understood in the marketplace, but not with guaranteed odds or a short print serial number on it? Do you care if something is, is perceived to be short printed or do you want something that's guaranteed with you know whatever the exact odds or the serial number is so drop that down that's a question of the day drop that in your in the comments what's your feeling on on uh, non-stated short prints and as always thanks for coming watching the video having some fun in the break discussing this great fun hobby if you're new here please consider subscribing hit the bell icon so you don't miss any videos in the future pack openings like this will drop on wednesdays any bonus videos will drop on fridays and we'll talk later thanks